right guys, the first thing we need to do is put some whole buttermilk, about two cups if you've got it, into a large bowl. And any hot sauce you like, of course, I like Louisiana hot sauce, but they're all good, aren't they? And we're gonna put about two tablespoons in here, just like that. It does not make your chicken hot, okay? It just gives it lots and lots of real good flavor. And I've got two pounds, right at two pounds, of chicken tenders. We're gonna get these marinating for our delicious dish. These need to go into the refrigerator once I have them marinating and tossed about. Get them in there good, just like that. Cover with plastic, just like this. For four hours, it's gonna go in the refrigerator or you can even go up to overnight and you can go as little as two hours and they'll still be yummy delicious. Okay, y'all, we have been marinating these chicken tenders and that buttermilk and that hot sauce and we need something to dredge them in so we can fry them. Um, I have just a shallow dish. This is a little pie plate actually, what I'm using. And I'm first gonna start with one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So let me get that out of here. Just like that, there's one. And then one half. See, that's smooth off there. This is just for dredging, you don't have to be that particular, but anyway. And then some of that fresh cornmeal I have from the Gins. We're gonna use some of that, yes we are. They were so precious to to give us this for these videos. We also need one and one half cups of the yellow cornmeal. And if you don't wanna use yellow cornmeal, you can use white cornmeal if that's what you use. That's what my mama always used was white. And as a little kid, I wanted it to be that yellow color. I always said, when I grow up, I'm using yellow cornmeal. <laughs> Aren't we silly? We're silly, silly as kids. And I'm going to leave these things out because we're also going to use the same ingredients for our waffles in a little bit. All right, to this, we need one teaspoon of salt. Just like that. And then we're also going to need two teaspoons of granulated garlic or garlic powder, if you want to. And not garlic salt. Y'all see, we already put our salt, so I like to keep those separate so I can kind of control what I'm putting in there. This is real similar to what I fry my chicken with, but I don't use the cornmeal. And I use a few more spices, but it's very similar. We'll have to fry chicken soon. Yes, we will. And then I've got two teaspoons of onion powder, or you can use granulated onion as well. And we're also gonna do two of those. Sorry, smells so wonderful. And to that, one more little seasoning. I definitely will put that lid on. I can see me, I'll spill that. It's some cayenne pepper. And I'm using one teaspoon. However, um, I'll let you know, you know John and I'll do a taste test. I'll let you know if that's too hot or how spicy that is, okay? I don't normally measure these things, so I'm starting with that, but you see what I'm saying? So I will let y'all know, I sure will. All right, I'm just gonna kinda whisk these things together and we're gonna dredge those chicken tenders and get them over to the stove, get us all over to the stove. There we go. It was 80 degrees yesterday here in Louisiana and tonight it is getting down to freezing and it started that midday so crazy we're on the roller coaster ride before we get to spring <laughs> i bet lots of y'all are whoo all this went up my nose it smells good but it makes me want to sneeze y'all okay like i say i'm keeping all this here we're going to use a lot of that to make our corn meal waffles here is our chicken our glorious chicken 
and I need some tongs. Yes, I do. And you just get get them out of here and sort of let the excess drip. You know, not not anything major like that. And I'll do several at a time, and then I'm going to put them on a plate and let them sit for about 15 minutes and it kind of lets the crust adhere to your little tender and that's just enough time to heat up our grease anyway our oil all right guys today john and john tyler were working on the job and they got kind of rained out it turned off real cold and i was misting rain and so they when they got through with one job they said we're coming home so it was before dark that's what i'm getting at and John was driving to the house and he passed the canning kitchen. Well, last year, you know, the canning kitchen flooded because we had it just dripping during the freeze cold and it dripped and it actually froze in the pipes and it just continued to come up and out into my sink. It was a huge mess all over the floor, like several inches thick of ice. And so we had to thaw that and John and I were freezing and trying to take care of cows out there in that mess so this year he just cut the pipe out from under the canning kitchen because it's just my kitchen sink down there draining you know, you know it's nothing major y'all been in there with me and uh he said that way if it freezes it'll just freeze out on the ground i'll fix that later so we said okay good deal so we thought we had it fixed up well this weekend i went in there real quick to get a few things to make that mardi gras ice cream that um king cake ice cream video and normally when i'm running in there cricket little kitty cat that opens the mail with me y'all know her she'll run in there with me well i don't let her stay in there because i'm cooking in there you know and kitty cats they'll jump up on counters or mine do my my animals are bad they don't mind so I I normally I'm looking for her and if I go out I'm I'm looking for her because I don't want to lock her up in there and um a lot of times I've got to go pick her up and get her out she won't come on out you know she wants to just stay in there and mess around well when I ran in there for a few things I didn't see her not around my feet or anything and even when I came out I looked for her and I did not see her. Hang on just a second, guys. That is our buttermilk timer. So I'm going to get to that in just a second. Anyway, I didn't see her. I didn't see her when I was going out there. And I looked right before I left. I didn't see her. So I was like, okay, we're good. Well, I even went down there feeding yesterday at the chicken coop. And that's where she is down in that bar. And I fed her. But I didn't see her. And I said, well, wonder where Cricket is. But it was a beautiful day. Nice and warm yesterday, so I didn't think anything of it. Well, when John drove up today, he, like I say, he was going past my canning kitchen. And he saw water running out of that pipe from inside the kitchen that he just had straight pipe coming out from the sink. And he thought, well, what in the world? Because he knew we didn't have any water running in there. And we had checked it just the other day and made sure nothing was leaking. So he said, well, let me stop and check that out. He went in there, and as soon as he opened the door, Cricket comes flying out because she's been stuck in there for three days. That silly, silly cat. So I asked him, has she made a horrible mess? I went down there and checked it out, and the only thing she had done was get in every window and rake all the stuff out of the window, trying to get out, I'm sure. And then... <laughs> She turned the water on, so that actually told John something was going on. He saw water running out of that pipe, or otherwise she'd still be down in there. I don't know when I'd be going back in there. That crazy little kitty cat. So at least she had some water to drink, you know, and she didn't make a mess, believe it or not. She just kind of knocked things down trying to climb out of there. <laughs> silly, silly kitty cat. So now I've got to really be sure, even if I don't see her around my feet, because she was slick. She slipped in and uh, in there on me so easily. I, was, I just couldn't believe it. But um, thank goodness John saw that. Thank goodness for the rain. See how God works. He made it rain a little bit so they come home for dark so he could see that water and get cricket out of that canning kitchen. Bless her heart. Okay, y'all, let's get to the stove. All 
right guys, we've got our chicken tenders over here that we just breaded so nicely. And I'm gonna turn on my fire because while these sit for about 15 minutes, that will be letting our oil heat, won't it? And I wanna get y'all down here. I've got me a cast iron pot and I filled it not quite half full, okay? Just, just two or three inches or so. And I used canola oil. You can use vegetable oil, whatever you want to use, okay? And so by the time this gets hot to about 350, 360 degrees, then we'll start frying, okay? And also have you a pan. I've got me a little pan with the rack on it that I can put them on, and that way they can stay crispy all over and I've got my oven on warm that whenever I get through I can just slide them on warm and hold them till we make our uh, waffles okay so I'll see y'all when this when this grease gets hot okay y'all our oil is good and hot so we are going to start these frying in batches looks good about three or four minutes on each side and don't overcrowd them i think i'm gonna do about four at a time and i'm gonna flip them in about three or four minutes and then go about three or four more minutes and i'll see y'all back it's been three about three and a half minutes guys and they're looking good aren't they i'm gonna flip them all they look so good. They smell so good. You go about three or four more minutes. Um, it's been three more minutes, and I know they're done because they've actually kind of quit frying. Do y'all know what I mean? They'll change. They'll go from this mad sounding fry to a just slow down, and so then you know they're done. Doesn't that look good? And I'm putting them on this drain, this strainer, so they'll drain and stay crispy all over and put them in the oven on warm. Yum! One more. He's a little bigger, so I left him till the end. And then we just start all over. Y'all think this is going to be enough for just John and me? <laughs> I think so too. I do, I do. Hey guys, aren't they pretty? I'm going to slide them in the oven on warm, just warm. I don't really need to cook them. And we're going to make those cornmeal waffles together real quick. Yup. Hey y'all. We are going to make some cornmeal waffles. <laughs> yes, we made cornmeal biscuits last month, so why not cornmeal waffles? Um, and they're going to have cheese and jalapenos in there, and I fried some chicken tenders to go with it for chicken and waffles. Um, the first thing we're going to need is two cups of all-purpose flour. So let me get that out of here. And I've talked to y'all before about measuring flour, kind of fluff it about. And don't let it pack down so you won't overdo. And then scrape that top. I'll just use a butter knife or a dinner knife like that to scrape it flush like that so we won't use too much. And a lot of you have asked me where I got this big old uh, flour canister. And I got it at Walmart like honestly 15, 20 years ago. But I see them still in Walmart because I'll get them and pop uh, popcorn in them, give it away for presents like caramel popcorn. And it was under $20 15, 20 years ago, and it's still under $20. And those are handy. And you see they're wide mouths, so they don't get in the way of you measuring. So I love that. And a lot of y'all have seen it and loved it. So I'm telling y'all where I got it. And I'm going to use two cups of this yellow cornmeal that the Gins gave us. They're some of our friends. And they have their own cornmeal. Is it called a grist meal? I think, maybe. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And so, I'm using some more, Miss Nancy, just to tell you. 
We still got some though. I'm gonna use it all up. Use it all up though, don't you worry. So that's going in there. That's gonna be extra special, but you can use yellow cornmeal, just all purpose is all you need. And to this, we are going to need one tablespoon of sugar. You can put more if you want to, but I just like to kind of take the edge off, not really make them sweet. So mine's one tablespoon. Some people will put about two tablespoons, but I'm just doing one. You could put honey too, and I have. Um, let's see, to our one tablespoon of sugar, we're going to do two teaspoons of baking powder. And I've showed y'all that before. I love this little clabber girl baking powder because it's got that little edge there and so it helps you measure that flat just like that. I just love that. Two teaspoons of baking powder. And then we're going to do two teaspoons of salt. And the kind of salt I use is iodized sea salt. That's what I use, guys. And to that, now I need to whisk these little items together so we won't have them clump of salt or clump of powder. Y'all know how that is. I've done that before and literally it stays in a clump and you will get that in your cornbread. One time I did that years ago and I saw John make a funny face and I said, oh, was that a clump of baking soda or baking powder? He's like, yeah baby, but I, I'm not complaining. He, he was just glad to have cornbread. He didn't come fuss about it. Um, Okay guys, now I need to mix up some wet ingredients to put in there. So we've got our one and one third cups of buttermilk that we homemade with our milk and vinegar because they didn't have any in town because it's supposed to be possibly a snowflake coming down around here. So all the milk is gone. <laughs> so to this, we need four large eggs. Let me grab my eggs. Okay y'all, four large eggs we add to this. So I'm gonna Tap them open one at a time here. Put them in my buttermilk. I had to go buy some store-bought eggs. Can y'all believe that? My girls, we've had to keep locked up in their coop and they've got a little yard out there because those hunting dogs got dumped off on us. And I don't really trust that they'll leave my chickens alone. So they've got their own little yard to be in. But they're used to going all around in the yard and getting up in my flower beds and coming to visit. And so they're kind of on strike right now. They're not laying very much. You know, they're not being happy chickens. So if they don't get over that, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> we got, uh, I don't know, revolts, revolting on the farm. Revolutions, strikes. Who knows? Okay, so we've got our four large eggs, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Let's see. Let me get that. Okay, y'all, to that we need two tablespoons of oil. I'm using canola oil. You can use vegetable oil. One, two, just like that. And then what I need to do, oh, and one cup of water. Isn't that something? Right? I know. I don't know why you wouldn't go on and do that with milk or buttermilk, but I'm just going by the recipe, okay? We're going to be good people, good girls and boys, and we're going to go by the recipe, right? So we're going to put that water. I'm just breaking my little eggs up and kind of whisking them, if they will. There we go and into the cornmeal. This may not be a big enough bowl. I keep saying that every time I make cornbread with y'all and I still haven't found me a big old glass bowl because I like y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna mix this about pretty good and then I'm gonna fold in some sharp cheddar cheese, one half cup, and then some finely chopped jalapenos. I'll go on and put those in there. I did about a tablespoon or a heaping tablespoon, generous tablespoon of my jalapenos. And I used those pickle jalapenos that we made back during the summer out of the garden. We planted those together and then we made them. On my YouTube video, I think I'll, um, in the description box, I'll link y'all to the planting of our garden and then i'll link y'all when we made those pickled jalapenos 
so y'all can just binge out right here on this video, can't you? Okay, that looks good. I'm going to add in our cheese. Every little bit of it. I'm going to take this whisk out now. Grab me a spatula. I'm going to get our waffle iron heating up, y'all. And we're going to make some waffles. It's going to be good with that chicken in it, that fried chicken. Here we go. We'll get this heating. Get it plugged in. Y'all see my little waffle iron? I have had this since the boys were little, literally, like, I don't know, 20 plus years. It's got scratches on the paint, but it came from Walmart at, at Christmas time, and it was like maybe $10 back then. So, but it's really good, and it's the round one with the little four sections, and I like it for this. Uh, makes a pretty picture, and um, I have a bigger one that does four big squares, but for this, I'm just wanting that round waffle to put our chicken on, so I thought I'd break this little antique thing out. It's at least vintage, isn't it? Um, what is it called? Proctor Silex Morning Baking. Anyway, and it's blue and white. Like I say, it's kind of scratched up, but it's clean and it still works, so that's what we're going to use. I need some cooking spray though. Put that in there with it. And I'll just coat that really well. And I'm going to get y'all down here and we'll cook some waffles. Alright, y'all, looks good and hot. Spray it one more little time. And then into that, we're going to start putting some of our wonderful waffle mix. Scoot that, that burning my fingers. This waffle mix is good. This is about a half a cup. I'm probably going to need a little more than that, right? I'd rather have a little too full and it spill over than not enough. Wouldn't y'all? There we go. Okay, y'all. When you use a waffle iron, you close it. Here in a minute, it's going to start steaming out the side a little bit because it's cooking it. And once it begins to stop steaming, that's when you know it's done. And then you just check it for the toastiness you want. And then you take it out. I don't know if you can see the steam coming up or not. What I was talking to y'all about. Yeah, there's a little bit off to the side. Now you can. When it stops doing that a bit, that's when you know that your waffle is getting dead. Getting done. Yes, it is. Okay, y'all. While we're waiting on our next waffle to cook, I thought I'd make our hot honey butter sauce with y'all. I've got a half a cup or one stick of butter melted, and I used unsalted. Um, so I to that, I need a half a cup of honey. And this is that honey I got from that monastery in Greece. Is that not crazy? I know. I've heard people say crazy stuff like that. I'll be like, what? I never will, but I did. So y'all don't give up if you want to. And I need a half a cup, so I'm just finishing off my cup. All right, honey. Honey, behave, honey. Okay. And then to that, I'm going to use some more of this Louisiana hot sauce. You use whatever kind of hot sauce you like, okay? And I'm just going to do a couple of teaspoons or a couple of dashes like that. And stir that together. And then we're going to taste that. That's going to be good on our waffles and chicken, isn't it? And my honey is a little bit cool in my pantry, so I'm going to go heat this in the microwave for just a few seconds to get it nice and warm for me. So I'll be right back guys and we will stack these chicken and waffles up, okay? Okay guys, my steam has calmed down and I've checked him and he looks pretty good. So I'm going to put him up here. Yum! Our cornbread waffle. Do this another one. I'm just putting them right on that tray with my chicken tenders. 
and sliding them back in the oven. And I want to tell you, I ended up using on this particular waffle iron about one cup of this mix, this waffle mix. It's just about perfect. Back into the oven to keep these warm. Now come on. You will say the blessing for us will fix us a pretty little plate to eat and share with everybody. We'll do a taste test, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dear Father, I just thank you for this meal. I thank you for the day, Lord, for watching over us, just keeping us safe. Lord, please just be with the people in our prayers. Be with our nation, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's make us a plate. Y'all are ready to taste just like us, I'm sure. Let's see what I do with my little tongs, baby. My tongs. I'm just going to put us a, a cornmeal waffle. John and I made a sample by one. Yeah. Let's see. Pick us out a couple of pretty. Mm -hmm. couple of pretties. Let's see, we need, well, I'll do that for us. Okay, y'all, can you see this so far? Yum! I get a little too excited over food, don't I? Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. oh. No. No? And this is our hot honey butter. Kind of won't separate, so just give a little stir when you get ready. Oh, my. See, this is our syrup. Isn't that going to be good? Would you say those cornmeal and cheese and jalapeno waffles, you could just put some oh, butter on it I could just, I could fold just it over fold and eat it? Fold it over and eat it, yes. Mm -hmm. You want to get us a fork, baby, will. pretty please? I will, sweet. And y'all, to garnish with, you can put a few more sliced jalapenos if you want to. And these are those pickled <clears throat> ones we all did together. I'm going to show y'all how pretty. Yummy. <laughs> this is exciting, baby. Exciting. Yes. You ready? Yes. Alright, cheers, darling. Girls first. Girls go first. Girls get to go Woo! First. Yes. Okay. You get one too. Let's taste it together. Okay. I'm I'm girl. I'm almost there. This girl's almost there. Yum. Oh my goodness. Be sure and get you some of that syrup, that hot honey butter too. You want a jalapeno? Ooh. Jalapeno too? Mm. <laughs> We're not talking. <laughs> That's delicious, baby. Is it delicious? Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so different, the cornbread. Mm -hmm. Waffle. That's different. I like that. Cornbread waffle. It's kind of like the cornbread biscuits I made, you know. Yeah. They also had jalapenos and cheese mm -hmm. in them. Mm, that's good, baby. So good. One bite won't do you. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And that sweet honey butter is not too sweet mm -hmm. at all. This no. is like, it just kind of mellows everything out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What you think about that fried chicken? It's good, sweet. You may have sampled a chicken tender earlier, huh, baby? Yeah. Maybe. You know how I am. I circle like a buzzard. Uh-oh, get it. Get that half. <laughs> yeah, you do circle like a buzzard. <laughs> I circle like a buzzard when you cook it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. A chicken's got a lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. And I put one teaspoon of cayenne in that um, dredge that we made. And I told y'all, I'll let y'all know if it's too hot. And it didn't. Mm -mm. You can't even no. taste cayenne in it, can you? It just tastes flavorful. It's got, it's got just enough pepper taste to it. Just, you taste a little bit of bite. That's all. That's the way it. I like it. Okay. This was just our little taste oh, yeah. test. Now we're going to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all later. Love y'all. I'll be back soon.